Bedeli Kara Bashkidi Abaki Abakin Yarro Sishin Yerebahaka Arabedi Shikinimona Hidikin Aram Bribili Kari Bishkiba Kiria Bariam Bribili Arra Bashkidi Sinio Abararia 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 Ribeli Arri Vishi Sinioba Shiarabarada Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Abba. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday morning. It's day seven. The Shabbat. Hebrew, Jewish, biblical day of rest. Day seven. The creation day of rest that was before the Jewish day of rest it was actually instituted in creation and on this day we pray for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory on this day we declare that the kingdom of God is established in the earth as it is in heaven. We declare the millennial reign of Jesus Christ has come. We receive him into the earth. And we declare his glory and we declare his power. It's no longer in part. It's no longer by faith. It is in fullness. The kingdom the power and the glory forever. And I want to give you your meditation for this uh, Saturday morning. I want to give you the word of the Lord for these. We've been meditating on the disciples prayer and we've been taking each phrase from the disciples prayer and uh, I'm excited because in actuality we're still we are still not in the kingdom in fullness but in the Holy Ghost we are in the kingdom because the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. And so in the Holy Ghost, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And I, I just want to give you a, a brief exhortation, a brief meditation. Good morning, Isaiah. Good to see you on this morning. Going to connect in a few as we head over to the uh, USAM Bible class. But, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is significant, the last two phrases of the disciples' prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And this phrase, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, it is significant to state and to understand what God 
actually is saying and how God directed uh, this prayer to be prayed uh, for the kingdom to come. And I want to uh, just briefly uh, break that down, share that for, for today. It is uh, it is uh, 614 on Saturday morning. I'm going to, um, you know, give a brief meditation that I have to head out. Uh, for a morning Bible teaching prayer on prayer uh, on the west side of our city. So let's pray and let's get into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that this is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Thank you, Jesus, that this is all you're doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Lord God, to receive your heart, to receive your mind, to receive your spirit. Thank you for the opportunity to enter into the fullness of what you desire in your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to know you. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity, hallelujah, to hear you, to hear from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity, hallelujah, to access, Lord, your kingdom here now even before it comes in fullness we have full access into it and I thank you God for that Lord have your way let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight you're our Lord you're our strength and you're our redeemer in Jesus name amen <laughs> hallelujah I was reading in Jeremiah 33 this morning and uh it's a it's a chapter i actually have been meditating and reading on for the last two saturday mornings uh and uh and uh, i was reading again in jeremiah 33 this morning and i was able to see clearer the progression of the disciples prayer uh, that Jesus taught his disciples to pray uh, and culminating in yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory. This is the phrase that we are on this morning. We are on yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. It's the seventh phrase of the disciples' prayer. It's the last phrase of the disciples' prayer, and it declares... Uh, that uh, the prayer that we prayed on the third day of the disciples' prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, is now here. And it is being presented or it is being offered up to him. The kingdom is being offered up to him as he has come in the earth and, and and the kingdom is being presented to him and so these seven phrases we begin on sunday with uh the designation of uh, the phrase our father uh and we pray that in the holy ghost pray that in tongues to get a revelation of the father uh monday thy uh thy uh hallowed be thy name we pray that in the holy ghost we pray that in tongues to get a revelation of the Son, uh, the third phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's the third phrase. That is uh, the meditation on the Holy Ghost and the kingdom that comes in the Holy Ghost. And so we pray that in tongues to get a revelation of the kingdom that's coming in the Holy Ghost. The fourth phrase, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, we pray that in the Holy Ghost and we get a revelation of of the divine supernatural provision of God. Then uh, we pray the next phrase, the fifth phrase, which is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We pray that in the Holy Ghost until we get a revelation of forgiveness, our forgiveness from God, and then our forgiveness to those that have trespassed against us. Then the sixth phrase, which was yesterday, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray that in the, in the Holy Ghost and, and we get a revelation of, watch this, 
Let me get closer. We get a revelation of the access into the kingdom through much tribulation. The access into the kingdom through much tribulation. The book of Acts says, through much tribulation do we enter and will we enter the kingdom of God. And what this phrase is saying is don't lead us into that day of temptation, that that great day, uh, that evil day of all hell coming against us in the earth. Don't lead us into that day until you have armed us and you have clad, clad us with the power or the armor of God to come out of that situation, to come out of that day, to come out of that temptation with power and victory. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And this is speaking of the evil day. This is speaking of the evil day. It's speaking of going through tribulation with great power and great victory. And we said on yesterday that uh, this is uh, correlated to uh, Jesus when he went into the wilderness uh, by the Spirit of God, and uh, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness uh, to be tempted of the devil. And uh, and uh, he overcame that temptation with uh, the word of God, the word of God. Uh, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. For every temptation that the enemy presented to him, he had a word to actually confront the evil one and make him bow or make him submit and, and and so what this this sixth phrase yesterday is actually telling us is that uh, uh, don't lead us into that place of temptation into that evil day until you empower us to come out in victory until you empower us for deliverance. And we talked about the whole armor of God, placing on the whole armor of God. Today, I want you to put this phrase in the comment section. Today, he has us declaring and saying, yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory. I want you to put that in the comment section. For yours is the kingdom, for yours is the power, for yours is the glory. It, it is, it is, as we have been delivered from this world system, as we have been delivered from harlot Babylon, as we have been delivered from the evil day, as we have been delivered from great tribulation, we are now able not only to see the kingdom, but we are now able to offer up to him and to be a part of that great coronation, that great coronation when he sets up his kingdom in the earth and he is given a great celebration where there is great glory, where there is great power being offered and being established and being extolled to him. For yours is the kingdom, for yours is the power, and for yours is the glory. Put that in the comment section. For yours is the kingdom, for yours is the power, and for yours is the glory. And look with me in Jeremiah 33. I'm going to read uh, about three or four sections from Jeremiah 33. I'm going to start with Jeremiah 33, 3. I'm going to start with Jeremiah 33, 3. It might be a common verse to you because it is a... Uh, 
It is a familiar verse to those of us that have been in the body of Christ uh, for any amount of time. Um, it is a familiar verse. It starts at the third verse when it says, Thus says the Lord. I'm going to start at the second verse. Thus says the Lord who made it. The Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Now, that verse right there is a... A, a, it is an actual verse that is uh, giving us the process of prayer. Process the process of prayer is is twofold. It's a two sided coin. It's it's us calling to him, and it's him answering us with revelation, or him answering us with. Uh, uh, knowledge of things that we had no knowledge of before we called to him. And if you do not uh, get that other side of prayer, the one side, the, the prayer side that we uh, gravitate to and we understand is is our side where we, we call to him or we, we petition him or we call out to him. But that's not all there is to prayer. There's another side of prayer where he now responds and he no, he doesn't just respond with meditation or excuse me, manifestation first. And you've got to understand this. You got to understand the process of prayer. God will answer you through revelation, through uh, the understanding of his word, before he answers you with manifestation. God will answer you with revelation before manifestation. God will answer you by showing you things that will help you make it through what you're going through until you get through it. You guys understand that? He will answer you by giving you revelation of why you're in what you're in and where it's going so that you have the fortitude and so that you have strength to go through. What you are missing in the process of prayer is the revelation that comes to get you through everything you're in right now. You want God to just take you out of it. But God's not going to take you out of it. He's going to take you through it. Put in the comment section. God wants to take me through this, not out of this. He wants to take me through it. He doesn't want to interrupt it and just take you out of it. Now, you know, that's that mentality. That's that mentality, that 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 rapture mentality that it, it's going to be too tough. It's going to be too rough. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be too difficult. And, and God's going to have to try to have to like to snatch us out of this, this thing uh, uh, because if he doesn't snatch snatch us out of this thing, you know, uh, the devil will have its way and the devil will beat us upside the head and, and, and we won't make it. Uh, no, 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 no. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. That is a lie from the pit. Listen, God wants to take us through, not take us out. God wants to take us through, not take us out. One more time. God wants to take us through, not take us out. Out. Now, if you understand the process of prayer, you'll understand how God takes you through. 
Call unto him and he will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. That you do not know. It's the not knowing that is uh, as much of the tribulation and as much of the uh, opposition as anything else. In other words, not knowing, thinking that you're going to go under thinking that this is it. I'm, you know, I'm not going to make it. I know I heard this. I thought I heard this, but it don't look like I'm going to make it through this thing because uh, uh, this thing, this trial is greater than I can bear. No, 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 no. God wants to give you light. He wants to give you revelation of why you're going through what you're going through. That's what it means when it says, come unto me, all ye that labor in a heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My burden brings light, 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 revelation. My burden brings illumination. My burden causes you to actually come in everything you have within you to me and I give you illumination that lightens the load. I give you illumination that causes that thing to be bearable. Listen, and so we've got to understand the process. Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And so that's that. That's the process of prayer. Then look at the verse after that. For thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the house of this city and the houses of the king of Judah, which have been pulled down to fortify against the siege mounds and the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but only to fill their places with dead bodies of men whom I will slay in my anger and my fury. All for those for all for whose wickedness I have hidden my face from uh, this city. Uh, and so in this in this phrase, he, he's actually showing Jeremiah now uh, uh, what he does not know about the trial or the great tribulation that they're going through. They, they are they have been sieged. Uh, they have been uh taken captive their city has been overrun uh their city has been totally decimated and jeremiah is in the midst of this captivity and god is telling him call unto me and i'll show you what you're going through and what you're going to why you're going through what you're going through and what you're going to why you're going through what you're going through and what you're going to and so he begins to show jeremiah what's going on in jerusalem why they are being overrun why their city has been decimated why their city has been destroyed and he says i will he says he says i i hid my face from this city I hid my face from this city. But he says, behold, I will bring it back to health. I will bring it back to health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. So it's through the trouble, it's through the tribulation, it's through the decimation that God is wanting to awaken them to who they are, to reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. And he says, and I will cause the captives of Judah and the captives of, of Israel to return. And I will cleanse them from all of their iniquity by which they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all of their iniquities by which they have sinned and by which they have transgressed against me. Then I shall be 
then it shall be to me a name of joy and praise and honor before all nations of the earth who shall hear all the good that I do to them and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I provide. And so in the midst of the tribulation, in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the decimation, He's saying, call unto, me, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you knew not of. And then he begins to show Jeremiah why they're going through what they're going through and what is unto. And he shows them that I am purging and I am purifying you. Because they had stopped serving him. They had stopped worshiping him. They had stopped serving him in the feast. They had stopped uh, offering up sacrifices. They have stopped shedding the blood uh, of the bulls and the bullocks and so on and so forth. And so their sin was coming up before God and their sin was not being atoned through the blood of bulls and bullocks and turtle doves yearly. And so he had to take them into captivity uh, to actually wake them up to cause them to recognize uh, the God that brought them out. And so uh, I don't have time to go into the fullness of all of this, but I will say this, that when you turn away from the God that saved you and that delivered you, and when you do not serve him with all of your heart, uh, there are things that God will take you through not to uh, do you in, but to bring you to a place of awareness and, a, and, and an awakening, and awakening to the fact that there's no God like our God. There's no help behind besides his help. And, and, and it causes you to turn to him. Now, look at this is where I want to get to verse 14. Look at verse 14. And, and he goes on telling Jeremiah, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. That I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel, to the house of Judah. Listen, let me tell you one thing real quick. I just want to interrupt this, uh, uh, this teaching with a news flash. God is still going to do what he promised he would do for his people. And, and right now I'm, I'm specifically talking about uh, the nation of Israel. I, I'm specifically talking about the Jewish people. God is still going to do what he said he's going to do. Let me say this. The church, the believer in Christ, did not replace Israel. The believer in Christ did not replace Israel. God is still going to do what he said he's going to do for Israel. He's going to save Israel. Uh, look at that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Look at this uh, 14th verse. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. I will perform the good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel. And you should be praying for Israel because that's what Jesus is coming back to. You should be praying for the Jews. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is a Jew. And you should be praying that uh, they reconcile to Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah. Because when they do, there's great favor, blessing, and prosperity coming to the whole earth. Listen, I don't have time to go into Romans 11. Hallelujah. But they are uh, where they are. Blindness has come in part to them so that us, the Gentiles, uh, can come into the branch and that we would be grafted in. Uh, uh, but then, 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 Jer uh, then Romans says, uh, 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 if that 
has happened to them uh, for us to be grafted in. If God has had great mercy upon us, Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not trans uh, conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, he's actually telling us, uh, hallelujah, to stand, to intercede, to offer our lives up as living sacrifices for his people that offer their lives up. Glory to God. And some of them. Hallelujah. Most of them have been blinded because God wanted to bring us in. So I just wanted to interrupt that with a, with a quick admonition. Pray for Israel. Pray for Israel. All right. Let me get back to this. I got to go. I got to go. Verse 15. In those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up. To David a branch of righteousness and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth in those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely that's not talking about uh, spiritual that that's that's a literal in those days God's going to save his people and Jerusalem will be a place of refuge. Uh, let me keep reading. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man. To sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the priests and the Levites lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me, to offer grain offerings and to sacrifice continually. Look at verse, look at verse 19. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, thus says the Lord. If you can break my covenant with the night and the day so that there will be no day and so that there will be no night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant, so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne. And with the Levites and the priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the, hand, the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister unto me. What is that saying? Basically, this is the depiction of uh, the, the great tribulation at the end of the age. Now, there are always... Several, uh, you know, manifestations of prophetic words. There, there, there is, there is several manifestation of prophetic words. So this was performed in Jeremiah's day, but it also is prophesying. It was performed to a degree in Jeremiah's day, but it's also prophesying of the end of the age. It's also prophesying of that great tribulation at the end of the age where God's people in the land will go through tribulation to be purified and to be made ready for the kingdom of God to come into the earth. That kingdom of righteousness where Jesus will come and sit on the throne of David and there shall never be any throne where David's seed is not on that throne forever and ever and ever there will be a seed of David on that throne and that seed is Yeshua Hamashiach 
Matthew 1 1 says the Jesus Yeshua the son of Abraham the son of David that's way that's the way Matthew 1 1 starts out he's what he's the seed that 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 was being prophesied about concerning Abraham concerning his seed hallelujah that would possess the gates of his enemy he's the seed that was prophesied about concerning David, that seed that would sit on the throne of David forever and ever and ever. And this is what's being spoken of when God speaks to us to pray and to ask God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. It's talking about the coming kingdom of God that's going to be established in the earth through much tribulation. It's talking about his people that will be brought through, that will be delivered out of great tribulation into the kingdom of God. It's talking about that great day. Hallelujah. And it's actually saying, uh, don't cause it, allow it to come until we have been armored or till we have been clad with the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth with the helmet of salvation on with the breastplate of righteousness with the shield of faith with the sword of the spirit with your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace why so that you may be able to stand in the evil day listen there's an evil day coming and God is wanting to clad you with the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. He's not going to take you out. He's going to take you through. And as you go through. Through. Hallelujah. God put this thing in my spirit, this phrase in my spirit I'm about to give you. I've given it over the years uh, to encourage uh, those that go through whatever they go through in their days of trial and their days of tribulation. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give it to you because it is a uh, it is a word of encouragement if you're in something right now. It goes like this. It's simple. It says everything you're going through is for what's about Abash. Everything you're going through is for what you're about to go to. And everything that's happening to you, it's for what's about to happen through you. Put that in the comment section. That's the last thing I'm going to share with you. Everything you're going through is for what you're about to go to. And everything that's happening to you is for what's about to happen through you. God has a way of preparing and positioning his people for greatness. And the degree of your go through is the it is commensurate to the degree of your greatness. If you've been going through something great, 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 great tribulation, it's probably because there's something great, 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 great that God has for you that you basically just don't have insight and you don't have foreknowledge of. But God calls you to call unto him so that he can show you those great and mighty things that you do not know of right now. And so if you're in the midst of a trial, if you're in the midst of a tribulation right now, call unto him. He will show you great and mighty things that you don't know right now. But when you, Abba, when you get revelation of those things, God will make sense of the go through for you and you will now be able to stand, hallelujah, against every opposition of the enemy. You will have what it takes 
to stand in the evil day. And so I, I just want to I just want to encourage you and admonish you that everything you're going through is for what you're about to go to. And everything that's happening to you is for what's about to happen through you. This great day that's coming where the kingdom is offered up, hallelujah, to the sun. Ah, and all things are placed under his feet. This is a this is going to be a great day in the earth. This is going to be a great day in the earth where the kingdom of righteousness is going to be established in the earth. Listen, right now we are not under the law of righteousness. We are under the law of sin and death. The whole earth is under the law of Moses. The whole earth is under the law of Moses. This is the law of sin and death. This is the law of, uh, you know, you break the law, you, you suffer consequences. The whole earth is under the Ten Commandments, whether they know it or not. Whether they know it or not. Listen, listen, uh, murder is, is, is illegal in the whole earth because of a law that was placed 5,000 years ago, thou shall not kill. The whole earth is under the law of sin and death. And we did not know that uh, these laws were sin until God placed it in the earth through Moses and gave Moses to give these commandments to his people. His people are established in the earth as light. And so they shone that light of the laws of God concerning humanity to the, whole, to the whole earth. And so the whole earth is under the law of Moses. When Jesus comes, the whole earth is going to be under the law of righteousness. Or the whole earth is going to be, like the scripture says in the book of John, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. It's going to be a reign of righteousness. Romans 10 talks about it. Hallelujah. It's going to be a reign of righteousness. And the scripture says, his name shall be called Jehovah Abba K. Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. And his reign is going to be a reign of righteousness. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. A, a, a righteous rule, a righteous reign where the whole earth will be under the reign of righteousness. The Right now, we see the results Hallelujah. Um, not only being under the law of Moses, but you see a generation that as closer we get to the coming of the Lord, they're trying to remove the consequences of sin. They're trying to take from the earth what is sin and legalize it and call it righteousness and call it right so that there would not be any backlash or consequence, uh, hallelujah, that, that is levied upon those uh, that walk in wickedness. And we see that happening in the earth. Listen, the answer is not removing the standards. The answer is not removing the landmarks. The answer is not removing the consequences. The answer is Jesus coming back. <laughs> Hallelujah. And giving us power, glory to God, to overcome completely and forever. <laughs> to overcome completely and forever the, uh, the law of sin and death. Glory to God. This mortal is going to put on immortality. This corruption is going to put on incorruption. Sin will be vanquished. Hallelujah. Righteousness will be established. It will be the order of the day. That's what's coming when Jesus comes. That's what's coming when it says, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever and i don't know what you're in right now and i don't know what you're going through but i do know this god is going to take you through it 
and you're going to come in to your purpose and your calling as that that he placed you in the earth to become in preparation for the coming of the kingdom of God. I don't know what you're in right now, and I don't know what you're going through, but there's greatness on the other side of it. There's greatness on the inside of you. And God is, is getting it out of you. And if you're in the temptation, if you're in the wilderness, it's because he has led you there because you have been filled with the word of God. Jesus wasn't led to the wilderness until till he was 30 years old and he had been baptized by John and the dove came upon him. And the scripture says, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost went into Jordan and the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, but he had what he needed to go through. Listen, it's just a test. And it's a test that you're in because the answers are in you. You have the answers. He's given you the answers. Whether you know it or not, you are full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so if 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 you didn't have the answers, if 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 the, the, the word wasn't in you, if you hadn't sat under the word and sat under the spirit of God for the time that you sat under, he wouldn't lead you into that temptation. That's what the verse is speaking of. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. The actual translation, it says, don't lead us into that day until you've given us power to be delivered out of it. In the name of Jesus. And I believe that God is brought us to a time where we, we, we have all of the revelation from past generations. We've been given everything we need to go through to bring the kingdom from heaven to earth. And as we understand what's inside of us, and as we allow God to bring it up, hallelujah, no devil in hell will be able to stop us or block us. And there's coming a great seventh day. There's coming a great seventh day where we say, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. There's coming a great seventh day in the earth. That day of rest, that reign of the kingdom, that millennial reign where we say, hallelujah, here it is, here it is, here it is, Jesus, yours is the kingdom. Here it is, here it is, here it is, yours is the power. Here it is, here it is, yours is the glory. Forever, 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 forever. And I declare to you, that you are a kingdom man, that you are a kingdom woman, and the kingdom is within you, and the kingdom, Abba, is in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, and God's going to get it out of you. He's going to get it out of you into the earth so that the reign of Jesus and the reign of righteousness can be established in the earth, beginning in Jerusalem and spread to the whole four corners of the earth in Jesus' name. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to tell you that you can go with us to Jerusalem to see this place where Jesus is going to set up his kingdom in the earth. We go every year at the end of the year in October and we start preparing through 
uh, an internship called the Israel Mandate Internship and Pilgrimage to Jerusalem. We start preparing in May. From May to August, we teach and we pray. We pray and we worship and we teach and we pray and we worship and we teach. We talk about the end times. We talk about how the kingdom is going to come. We talk about why Israel. We talk about uh, the, the coming of the Lord. We talk about uh, Jerusalem, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We talk about cities of refuge that are going to be established throughout the earth before his return that will be great coverings against the day of shaking and tribulation that comes in the earth before his kingdom comes you want to be a part of this you want to be a part of this internship and this trip to Jerusalem God told me in Israel in 2017 he said to me he said one of the ways that my body is going to prepare for my return before I return is reconnect to the city that I'm coming back to and he said I want you to stop doing holy land vacations and holy land tours I don't want you to do a holy land tour I want you to connect my bride to my holy land and so every year we take pilgrims, believers, to Jerusalem. It's one of the mandates on my life that God spoke to me in 1992 that I would do when I was 25 years old. He told me I would he told me I would have a ministry to Israel. He told me I would bring many people to Israel. He told me that at the end of the age as the the coming of the Lord nears that there would be a resurgence and there would be a restoration of uh, that holy city in preparation for his kingdom to come. That was when I was 25. It's 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 coming and it's here. Abba ka da 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 ha. And so I want to encourage you. You're going to see more on the social networks, Instagram. You're going to see more on uh, Facebook. Uh, if you're interested in connecting with that internship. Uh, to hear teachings like uh, uh, what you heard today and, and more about the coming of the Lord, about the coming kingdom of God, about the end times, the book of the Revelation, uh, all of that makes sense. And listen, if you want to make sense of it, get connected to the Israel Mandate Internship and the, the pilgrimage and trip to Israel uh, this year. May through August is the internship, and the uh, the trip is in uh, September, the end of September. And if you want more information, you can DM me, uh, direct message me, or uh, put your put your uh, email address in here, and I will send you more information. But it's an online course this this season. We're doing it strictly online. So I'm gonna be teaching like a Zoom, a web Zoom, like through through uh through the uh the 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 not Facebook but it's gonna be through a, an online uh platform an online teaching platform and so uh you could you could take it right from the comfort of your home throughout the nation and then uh, we'll meet up in Israel. <clears throat> we'll meet up in Israel in September. Some of you that you only see me through the lens, you'll see me face to face in Israel. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we'll have a great time in the Holy Ghost as we visit the Messianic congregations in Israel, as we visit uh, the believers that are believing for Yeshua to be enthroned as King of Israel, and as we visit the great sites uh, that Jesus, uh, where Jesus walked the earth. God bless you. Thank you for joining me on this Saturday morning. Let me pray for you. Father, I ask you now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to release a revelation of the kingdom of God that we might say yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. Lord, I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that those that are under the sound of my voice that are going through, I ask you in the name of Jesus 
take them through. I ask you in the name of Jesus, bring them through. I declare now in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, that what they're going through is what the, is for what they're going to. And what's happening to them is for what's about to happen through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We will see you Monday for our Father and hallowed be thy name. Bless you guys. Have a great weekend.